or the point of today's lesson basically is to look at what this concept of a tragic hero is uh, using some theoretical examples and we'll, we'll go back and look at uh, the, the history of tragedy as um, one of you said that it's about the, that tragic play uh, which we'll be focusing on today and then the second part of the lesson will be then trying to provide links to the characteristics of a tragic hero with our particular study of Macbeth. So you have um, different stages of, of where this idea of a tragic uh, play comes from. The first and kind of uh, evidence we have of a tragedy as a genre is from ancient Greek theatre. Um, and Aristotle wrote a whole treatise on, on what tragedy is. Um, basically, he was analysing all these different uh, playwrights that were writing tragic plays. The Greek and Roman tragedies were pretty dire stuff, though. There was nothing really light about it. Like, the character of the porter in, in Macbeth would not exist in a, in a um, classical tragedy that was full-on tragic stuff. So there was nothing really light about those, those stories whatsoever. When you fast-forward to medieval the idea of tragedy is really um, intrinsically linked to religion. That you didn't have plays as such, but they were just kind of morality tales. Um, so that if there was something tragic happening, it was because of the fact that they had sinned um, and or gone against God in some way, and therefore they, you know, they, the, their ultimate downfall came and probably went to hell. Um, and then we're, for what we're looking at is the, the idea of Renaissance tragedy, which is more closely linked to the classical tragedy than it is to the medieval, because there was a, a rebellion, basically, against that idea of the fact that the church should rule everything. Um, and the Renaissance was more about building up that, that idea of the, the human as being more important than the, the esoteric or the religious. And they were you know, huge fans of the... Of, the, the Greeks and Romans as well. So that's what we'll be focusing on. So this guy, A.C. Bradley, um, wrote his book, Shakespearean Tragedy, in, I think, 1904. Um, and he's, you know, renowned as the number one academic on the, on the topic of Shakespearean tragedy. There's another, um, another guy as well that we might look at in next lesson. Um, but today we'll be focusing on his theory of Shakespearean tragedy. So it starts off where you have the exposition, there's a state of affairs, so that's, um, you know, it sets out the, the context of the play, the, the setting and, and what's happening. So what is that in our play, in Macbeth? What's the exposition in that? That's then followed on by, by the establishment of conflict, um, and that that conflict there as well uh, is, is in stages. So you have that beginning of conflict, development, and then coming up to that c catastrophe, which is the tragic outcome. So it comes down to the catastrophe there, which is the, you know, the ultimate tragic outcome. Um, and it, it needs to be the downfall of our tragic hero. That you, know, you can't have a happy ending in a tragedy, otherwise it becomes a comedy. Those two websites down there give you the full text of Bradley's Shakespearean tragedy because it's uh, out of print now. Um, it's free and available. So if you want to do some in-depth study about the tragic hero, either of those websites will give you the full script of that book. So just have a, a look at that quote there. Um, and we'll talk about the, the meaning of what that quote actually is in a second. So have a read of that, please. This part here, where it's talking about that, that it's not just anything that's, that's external to the hero that creates the tragic flaw. That it's not just other people that are um, manipulating him that creates that downfall, that he's actually responsible for it himself. So that, and that we cannot have a hero without flaws. That this is not a paragon of virtue as such, 
but that he is a, a human, flawed character. And it's the fact that the character is flawed that, uh, that his downfall comes about. So you have this is his basic, his basic flow chart of how the tragedy comes about. So that he does something wrong or he does not do something that he should have done and that's combined with other causes. So in Macbeth, what are some other causes? So he, I mean, we, we can look at his actions, but what other causes does happen that create that downfall? So yeah, it's the, the external forces that, that the witches um, put on him, the, the manipulation that they do with the prophecies, and his wife, what happens with his wife? She like pushes him to do Yeah, so she, she really manipulates him and plays on his gender and his insecurities about his gender as well to make um, him go through with those actions. And that then creates a demise of, his, of, of that character. So it's, it's his own flaw, which is in Macbeth, what would say his flaw is? What is his, what's, his, what's wrong with him as a character? He's easily manipulated. He's easily manipulated. What else? And his ambition as well. And that both of those things create his demise, his downfall. 